The NFL draft is upon us. Harp on Sports, the bar. Harp on Sports podcast, audio, media network. Uh, share, follow, like, subscribe at Harp on Sports on all, on all of your social media platforms. HarpOnSports.com and the Harp on Sports YouTube page. So what do we have in store for you tonight? A little draft dance. Uh, the vaulted ceiling and a couple of turf monsters. So let's get this started. Make sure we got my Chiefs hat on. There we go, and the draft can begin, even though the Kansas City Chiefs do not have a pick in the first round after trading it uh, for Orlando Brown, which I thought was a fantastic move on their part. Uh, their biggest weakness is one of their biggest strengths, strengths now. They addressed it in free agency and uh, via trade. A lot of people love draft picks. I love proven players more, uh, especially if it's not a top five pick. Why would you hold on to that when you can get a proven player? But anyway, nonetheless. So the draft dance. Here we go. She's here, baby. The draft is here. And quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. We're going to see three straight quarterbacks, maybe four straight quarterbacks. Uh, after we get to that fourth quarterback, who knows what's going to happen. And... You know, we have a lot of guarantees at the top of this draft. We do top, top two, depending on what the 49ers do, whether it's Trey Lance, whether it's Justin Fields, Mac Jones, who knows what they're going to do. Uh, am I excited about the draft? Of course I am. But this is now entering the neighborhood of overrated. Not quite, but but we're getting in the neighborhood of it being a little bit overrated. I want to look at the teams, at least the teams in this state, and the structure of this thing. And here's where I sit. Of course, the Jaguars are going to do what they need to do with Trevor Lawrence. More of a the guy would have been the number one pick in last year's draft. If you're hearing the, he's more of a guarantee than Andrew Luck. Uh, not since Peyton Manning have we had prospect and a prospect like this. Yeah, you got to draft the guy. It's not even a debate, not even a discussion. Is he going to be good? Should be. Should be. If he doesn't work out, you're talking biggest bust in the history of the NFL. That That's where the bar is on him. So you draft him and then you go from there. Uh, I look at what the Jags have. What are they have? Four of the top 45 picks in the draft. Um, Urban Meyer going to try to start building this thing out. Remember, they used both first-round draft picks last year on Defensive players. So, I, I can't help but think that they're going to try to do the things they need to do to surround Trevor Lawrence with what he needs. We we do know that offensive line-wise, right, they're pretty much going to be where they were last year. Same offensive lineman. They do. Jawan Taylor's still on his rookie deal. You still have Linder signed for one more year. Um, Cab Robinson got his big money. Um, Andrew Norwell got another year, so drafting an offensive lineman to help protect, I, I, I doubt it. I doubt it in the first round. The Jaguars, first pick Trevor Lawrence. Again, everybody has their suggestions and their ideas. A lot easier said than done. If I were the Jaguars and I'm sitting there in the middle of the, or the middle 20s in the first round, if I can move back for more picks next year, that's what I would do. That's what I would do because you're in Kadarius, Tony, um, you know, Barmore, the big defensive lineman from Alabama. If I were the Jaguars sitting at 25 and I can move back to 30. Now, I don't know if the Packers interested in coming up there. Who, who knows? But if I can move back four or five spots and then say, hey, look, I'll, I'll take a second and a fourth next year. Because you want to keep adding picks to the future as you try to rebuild this thing. And then you can move around and get you the position players that you need. So Jags are in a great spot, but... If I had two picks in the first round, I get what I want with that first pick, and then I play a little toggle game with the second pick. I would. So the Jags are going to be in great shape. I, I, I three of the first four picks. Jags have four f- picks in the top forty-five. Three of those would be offensive players. As well, they probably should be. As well, they probably should be. Um, looking at the Buccaneers, the Buccaneers are in great shape. Whatever they want to do there at thirty-two, I keep hearing, well, maybe they draft a quarterback. Why would you do that? Why? So we can done play next year. You brought everybody back to win now. Everybody back to win, to win now. Bucks shouldn't draft a quarterback, period. I don't think they're going to either. You're the latest with Blaine Gabbert, signing Blaine Gabbert, bringing him back. There. Why would you draft a quarterback? Why would you do that? If I, if I were them, I wouldn't. Nope. No way. Who's the best player on the board at 32? 
Is there a defensive lineman? We'll go with that. Is there a linebacker? We'll go with that. Is there, is it offensive line? I, we'll, we'll go with that. I'm not drafting any place that's extremely strong. I guess defensive front, but the defensive front was fantastic in the Super Bowl. Somebody's going to get injured. Somebody's going to get banged up. Find your weakness. I guess you never can have enough offensive linemen to protect Tom Brady. Tony Brown's back. The, the Buccaneers can do whatever they want there at 32. They really can. Um, and the Dolphins, two picks. If I'm the Miami Dolphins, what am I doing? I am doing this. All right, you're sitting at six, right? You have to hope if you're Miami, because to me, they want either Jamar Chase or Kyle Pitts. And I'm going to get to Kyle Pitts coming up here in a second. You're hoping that the Bengals draft Sewell. If the Falcons, if, if you know, we heard the talk that the Lions wanted to move up with the Falcons, who knows how much this stuff is true. But if you're the Dolphins and somehow Chase or Pitts fall to you, then there you go. There you go. You got two a weapon. Former teammate in one case. Um, so that's pretty easy for Miami. Now, with what's coming up, now both those guys are gone, what do you do? Uh, again, <laughs> do you draft a big offensive tackle to, to protect to his blind side? Receivers can run around and eventually get open. As you saw in the Super Bowl, Patrick Mahomes having three seconds to throw the football doesn't do him any good. Oh, you need weapons. Yeah, yeah, I'd rather have an offensive line than weapons. Especially when you're building a quarterback. Especially when you're developing a quarterback. You have all the weapons you want. If you can't block for them, you're hosed. So, I think they're good if any of those three guys fall there. If you had an order of what you wanted to pick, um, I'd go chase one. I would. I, if I were the Dolphins, I'd go Pitts two and Sewell three. That's what I would do. So, uh, you know, I, I I I look at what they have in Miami, and I'd, I'd rather protect him. Like those guys are going to be fine. Okay, let Tua develop. Um, that second first round pick again, where the Dolphins are, where would be their first round pick. Where they are, I, I'd play the same game that the Jaguars should play, which is okay. This is going to take a couple years here to get this thing cooking. Let's let's see if we can go back a little bit here. Always, I'd always want to have at least three picks in the first two rounds one one two twos i'd always want to do that so again if i were the dolphins i would try to position myself there barely miss the playoffs you get your big playmaker your offensive lineman then where you're sitting there in the late stages in the teens then i start i'll move back from 18 to 24 i'll move back from 18 to 27 if i can pick up a second and a third next year next year the falcons should be doing that too if the falcons are sitting there at four they're in salary cap purgatory they're a salary cap mess well, maybe you can get the Dolphins to come up to four and say, hey, you come up two spots. We're not going to ask you for a first to come up two spots. We're going to ask you for your second and your third next year. Because it's not about just this year. It's about next year. So, anyway, that's my little draft dance. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is going to go number one overall. Uh, 49ers. And I saw, well, they finally made the decision. They knew they were going to take. They've known forever. They've known forever, so you don't make a move all the way up there and not know who you want. So, oh my gosh, it's a surprise. Nah, that they've known who they want. The surprise is what the Falcons do it for. The Falcons at four is where this draft gets interesting. What do they do? Uh, speaking of, you know, interesting, Kyle Pitts could go four. One of the things I think that's interesting about Kyle Pitts is the expectations on him now. Greatest tight end prospect ever. Oh boy, oh boy, I was asking some people today, if he has a career like Travis Kelsey, is that good enough? Whoa, baby, that's where we're, that's where we're heading with him. I threw the things out there. What's funny about this is the expectations for Kyle Pitts are greater than they are for Trevor Lawrence. Kyle Pitts' expectations are, are, are higher than Trevor Lawrence's. People expect... Kyle Pitts to be the greatest at his position ever. Good night. Think about that. The expectations for Kyle Pitts are the greatest ever at his position. He's the greatest prospect ever at this position. Good night. I mean, you're talking about Tony Gonzalez, Antonio Gates. Antonio Gates had what? 11,000 plus yards 
is a tight end, 116 touchdowns. I ask you this. If Kyle Pitts has 11,000 yards as a tight end, 116 touchdowns. If Kyle Pitts has the exact same career as Antonio Gates, is that successful? The expectations of Kyle Pitts. I can't think of the last time in a draft. I can't. That the expectations for this player or this guy are to be the greatest that's ever played his position. That is absurd. It's a vaulted ceiling. It's almost impossible. You're not going to touch the top of that thing. If I told you Kyle Pitts has Antonio Gates' career, is that a success? Well, he never won a Super Bowl, huh? What if he has Tony Gonzalez's career? Is that a success? What if he has Travis Kelsey's career? Is that a success? Travis Kelsey's won a Super Bowl. Gates and hasn't. Think about the unrealistic expectations for Kyle Pitts. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. I haven't. I've never seen, at least in my lifetime, a guy that's coming is like, oh man, he's going to redefine all this. He is going to redefine all of this. Greatest tight end prospect ever. <laughs> okay. Who are his comps? What, what's an equal career? Good luck with that one. Poor Kyle Pitts, man. Just unrealistic expectations. And speaking of expectations, you know, what's going to be interesting is you're going to see multiple Gator offensive players go in the first round. And <laughs> I don't think you'll see three, but you, you, you're going to see two, you know, it's going to be a good draft for Florida. What did I see? They've had the third most players drafted in the last four years, which is pretty good considering how bad they were at the beginning of that stretch. Um, losing record, none, nonetheless. It'll be interesting to see the reaction of this because it, it works in one of two ways. After Florida has three offensive players go in the first two rounds and six offensive players go or whatever it is going to be when it's all said and done. People say, wait a second, how do we have six guys get drafted and we lost four games? Well, everybody set out the fourth one, but it, okay, got it. Or it's going to be pelts that Dan Mullen can nail to the wall and say, come here, come here, come here. This for the Florida Gators is the Dan Mullen draft. Look what I did. Is the first draft that Dan Mullen can look up as the Florida Gators and go, look what I did. Look what I did. Look at all that talent. Me. Me, baby. It's all me. So that that's that's it's his draft. It's his it's it's his first draft at Florida that he can point to everybody and go, it's all on me, baby. All me. You come here, I can do I can, you come here, I can do turn 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 you into this. You come here, tight end, I'll make you this. And I, I don't know what's going to happen with Trask, Kyle Trask, where he's going to end up going. If I had my guess, I'd say day three. Um, you won't be able to nail that to the wall. But remember Dak Prescott, right? Was he day three? It, it may take a while before you can nail that pelt to the wall. So that that's what it is, at least in terms of Florida. But, you know, Kadarius Tony, Kyle Pitts, it's it, both are going to go in the first round. And it's Dan Mullins. Come here. This is fun. Look what we can do. Once you get that reputation, it's it's a pretty good, solid reputation. Now, <laughs> Jalen Waddell and Devonta Smith, and Mac Jones, Alabama's going to have three guys. By the time you cut off, Alabama's going to have four or five guys. Alabama's going to have four offensive guys go in the top 20 picks. It's just ridiculous. So you're not quite there yet, but you'll, you'll see that next step. Better than anybody else in the SEC. So there's that, and... You know, it, it, it's the draft, the primary focus. I'm glad. Look, I'm glad a city like Cleveland's getting it. I am. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It, it's good. I, I liked it in New York for the longest time. It's hard to believe that we we're, I think, is it the seventh year, eighth year? It's not been in New York now, eighth year now. It's hard to believe. Where next? Oh, you know, Cleveland is going to Vegas. And then after that, is it, um, oh, is it Denver after that? You know, you start to see it it move around here. I, you know, ideas of where it could end up. I Seattle should get one. Yeah, you, you want to put the draft in cities that don't get Super Bowls is what you want to do. You want to put the draft in cities that don't get Super Bowls. That that, that don't have the weather for Super Bowls. So I mean, there's Vegas is an exception. It's a party. I get it. 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 First time there. Want to see how this 
is handled. The draft in Vegas is kind of a little bit of a dress rehearsal for the Super Bowl. Okay, how's this going to plan? What's our goals here? What are we going to do? But I'd like to see, see Seattle get one. I would. Minneapolis got a Super Bowl a couple years ago. Detroit's done a nice job downtown as they continue to to build. Look how good of a job. Look how good of a job Indianapolis did for the Final Four. Look how good of a job the NCAA tournament in Indianapolis, the, all of it. The NCAA tournament in Indianapolis should show you and how they handled that, all those teams, and the, why they should have a draft. So, you know, after Vegas gets its draft, of course, it – you know, Denver gets its, Cleveland's going to have its. I, I think the next two on the docket should be Seattle and Indianapolis. I, I know Detroit's kind of floating out there a little bit too. I mean, I know Cincinnati wants one. I mean, Jacksonville, look, with Lot J dying, you're not going to get one. Um, but that's where I am on those. A uh, couple other things here. Saw today that, is it BOA, Bank of America Stadium in... Charlotte is going to go to turf. You know, Notre Dame, what, about seven, eight years ago, went to turf uh, over grass. Just, you can do so many more things on it. It, it just, it's a better surface. It is. There used to be a time that grass was. It's so realistic now. You know, it's almost like an impossible burger. I can kind of still taste the difference a little bit, but we're very, very close. Very, very close. Um, Synthetic real uh, grass is just better. It's just something that people say now. It's just something that people say. And where I'm going with this, it's time that Jacksonville, Everbank, TIA Bank, excuse me, in the swamp at Florida, man, with all due respect, and I mean this as nice as I can, but it's the truth. Both those playing services are always awful, awful, just terrible. Playing service in Jacksonville is always awful. Always. It's a murky nastiness. And look, I try to at least jog every other day inside a Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. That thing is always dead. The grass is always dead. It's dead, dead, dead. End zones are dead. Things dead. It looks like it's got a fungus in it. Well, put down turf. You can do more on it. You can have more concerts. You can. It, it, it's going to last longer. It's always dead. It's out there with fertilizer. It's lay off the south field. It's being fertilized. It's dead. It's dead. It's always dead. It always looks like it's got some sort of infestation. And they're always reseed. I mean, I don't know how many times a year they resod Jacksonville. So come on. And now that you know, Charlotte's redoing theirs. Here's turf. I have no idea why. In the soupy, watery, muddy mess, you know, that, that both of those places are, why why they can't do turf. Or, or just tradition, we don't do turf here. Oh, come on. Notre Dame has turf for crying out loud. Baseball field has turf. Come on. Come on. Well, it's not good on the knees. It's not AstroTurf. It's not 1986, okay? It's a different structure. It's a different setup. So, uh, when I saw the... Carolina Panthers are going to a synthetic surface, turf surface. I thought, come on, little turf monster. Jacksonville and Florida should do it too. I don't know why they don't. Ego, well, it's a good natural surface. It's it's tradition rich. Oh, come on. Now one person goes to the field going, hmm, you know what makes our experience the best in the nation? The dead patches. The dead, the fungus. The fungus. They are, are, are dead, our dead patches on our field. It makes it so awesome. This drainage and the way the system works. You've built these stadiums bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So more water goes down. You don't have the filtration system that you did. Just, just turf it. Just, just turf it. So there you go. Harfod Sports of the Bar podcast, audio media, uh, radio network. Uh, the draft. Enjoy it. I can't wait to enjoy it. It's going to be the first one that I haven't covered, you know, in person or, you know, on the radio in Good gracious. 20 years. So I get to be you. I get to be a fan for a night. It's going to be a little bit bizarre. I can't think of the last time I watched a draft at my house. I can't. Oh, baby. 15 years? Longer than that. I guess I was in Kalamazoo. Crazy stuff. But 
I'll be watching, be having a good time, live tweeting, doing all that fun stuff. So I guess I'll be covering, but just for me, not for an organization. So there you go. Again, follow, share, like, share, follow, subscribe, all that at Harp on Sports and all the social media platforms, um, Twitter, Instagram, podcast page. You know it. You know where to find it. Enjoy the draft. Remember, stay clean, stay strong, stay focused. Frankenstein, have fun with your friends.